Hello viewers, welcome to my channel Pharmacy Pedia. Today we are here again to study a very interesting topic that is about the Bureau of Indian Standards specifications and analytical methods specified for toothpaste. In my earlier videos, I have pre presented before you the Bureau of Indian Standards specifications and analytical methodologies for skin creams and shampoos as well. So in continuation with that series, I am going to here discuss further about the specification details for toothpaste. Before starting that, I want to make the clear about the Bureau of Indian Standards. This is actually a statutory institution which was established in, as per the BIS Act 1986 to promote harmonious development of the activities of standardization, marking and quality certifications of goods. This actually gives you the guidelines and labeling instructions for the cosmetics. When we talk about the cosmetics, two regulations are very important. First is the Drug and Cosmetic Act 1940 and labeling instructions are provided by Bureau of Indian Standards. The time to time keep on revising the specifications for various cosmetic products and various changes takes place time to time. I have tried to make the guidance uh, very interesting and very simple so that the students can understand them and Try to make them clear as per individual type of the cosmetics. When we discussed about the shampoos, there were different specifications and testings. For example, foaming agents was very important. Foaming potential for any shampoo is very important. Similarly, when we discussed about the creams, we discussed about the stability part. We discussed about the total residue. We discussed about the uh, heavy metal contamination. Now, let us try to analyze and understand the analytical methods specified for the toothpaste and also try to understand what are the key uh, specifications being set for the toothpaste. Now when we try to understand the toothpaste specification as per the Indian standard 6356 in the year 2001, it clearly prescribes the risk requirements and the methods for sampling and testing for the toothpaste. Now when we talk about the oral product, two cleaning agents are uh, actually there. First is the dentifrice and second is the toothpaste. So let us try to first understand the difference between the two. Identifies is any substance or combination of substance specifically prepared for the public for cleaning the accessible surfaces of the teeth. So it actually refers to the dry powders. The, then came the concept of toothpaste. So toothpaste is defined as a dentifrice in the form of a smooth semi-solid. Semi please try to make clear very uh, the concept of semi it is a semi solid preparation containing accessible ingredients such as abrasive agents surface active agents humectants binding agents and other appropriate substance for maintaining the oral health maintenance toothpaste basically comprises of two categories first is the type 1 and type 2 type 2 type 1 is basically non fluoridated type 2 is fluoridated as so as the as it indicates one contains the fluorine another one don't contain the fluorine so when you talk about the composition part it actually and should not contain mono or disaccharides for example sucrose or other readily fermentable carbohydrates all the raw materials which are incorporated into toothpaste shall conform to the respective indian standards when, I, when we talk about the dispensing part it shall extrude from the collapsible tubes or any other suitable container in which it is packed and it should be stable when we talk about this further stability it should not show any sign of the deterioration during the normal condition of the storage it is again very important that they remain stable for a period of at least 28 days when we talk about the packaging material most of the collapsible metal tubes are being used or any other suitable metal which is being used for the packaging of toothpaste shall not corrode deteriorate or cause contamination of the toothpaste it is very important since, since toothpaste remains there for a long period of the time any sort of any sort of the contamination will be hazardous for the users now the guidelines also specifies that there has to be an acceptance test which shall we shall discuss in the further slides and there should be an established shelf life it should also contain other details like manufacturing uh, month and the year details the expiry date or the best before use period now as i told earlier for uh, shampoos as well as for the skin creams all the cosmetic products can bear the eco mark this additionally provides for the safety 
uh, and quality of the product so if any product is carrying this mark eco mark it means additional documentation has been provided which ensures that the product is being manufactured in a very hygienic conditions so certain documentation additionally are required for example when we talk about the eco mark as, uh, consent clearance has to be taken from the state pollution control board as per the provisions of the act and also uh, it has to abide with the, by the drug and cosmetic act 1940 other specific requirements uh, pertaining to the toothpaste relates to the heavy metals so heavy metals calculated as lead and arsenic shall not exceed for the lead it is 20 ppm and for the arsenic it is 2 ppm respectively when tested by the respective method described in the indian standard not a specific test relevant for the toothpaste is the abrasivity test now the toothpaste shall not exceed the limits for dentin abrasivity that is that for 2.5 times when tested as a part of the procedure given in anexure edge so in the anexure edge basically a uh, analytical method have been described whereby the limit has been set up and it should not exceed 2.5 times of that so it may be noted that this type of test is recommended to be done on the formulation only once to pass the above criteria let us now try to understand the packing and the marking system it has to be a certain information all the containers closures collapsible tubes sachets have to be leak proof and the closure should be tightly packed now what are the details to be mentioned over the packing and other uh, other labeling conditions so all the informations you must have heard about like name and type of the toothpaste whether it is fluoridated non fluoridated or like address of the manufacturer or the quantity of the substance present in that you the batch number present month and year of manufacturing best before period expiry date now it has to be very interesting to know that fluoride content has to be mentioned in ppm for the type of toothpaste along with the list of ingredients whatever has been used into the product now when we talk about the best certification marking systems if you have to carry the eco mark either for the packaging or for the content you need to take uh, that extra documentation uh, that is from the consent uh, documentation from the respective boards air board water board and state pollution boards now sampling has to be very composite it should it should not be non uniform the sampling has to be composite as per the indian standard 3958 now uh, also try to understand the test for the abrasivity stability and container inertness shall be the type test and shall be performed for product approval whereas the test for dispensing fineness ph heavy metals arsenic foaming power fluoride content and microbial count shall be carried out on each batch for the acceptance of the product so two things are there first is for the product approval and second is for the acceptance of the product so you will notice that the, the toothpaste formulation is having more number of criteria established since it is going directly to the mouth so one has to be ensured enough and it has it is having more number of specification that needs to be complied for the product approval so until and like always all other guidelines unless in other specified all the material used for the analytical testing has to be from the pure chemicals and wherever used distilled water has to be used now we have to try to understand this table again this is very important table for the toothpaste so these are the seven most important test which is required as a, as per the requirement of the indian standard the first is the fineness test so the particles retain on the 150 micron c it should not exceed the number 10 maximum number 10 for non fluoridated and one for the fluoridated now again for on the 75 micron Indian standard sieves. It should not exceed the number 2.5 maximum number 2.5 on the non-fluoridated toothpaste, and for the fluoridated, again the limit remains the same. Now, when we talk about the pH of the aqua suspension, it should range within the range of 5.5 to 10.5. Heavy metals I have disclosed earlier. When we talk about the lead contamination, it should not exceed 20 ppm. When we talk about the arsenic contamination, it should not exceed 2 ppm. Foaming power, that is the minimum. It should be 50 for both the fluoridated as well as the non-fluoridated toothpaste. Available fluoride ions, parts per million, should be 50 in case of non-fluoridated and 1000 in case of fluoridated. 
another uh, specification another testing which is desired is a total microbial count now it should be free from total viable counts per gram maximum limit is 1000 as per the indian standard 1464 gram negative pathogens per gram the maximum limit it should be it should not be present at all so you can please make a point here clear very clear that the, there should be complete absence of the gram negative pathogen per gram you must have remembered in the case of skin cream certain 10 level was permitted but when we talk about the toothpaste still it is not permitted at all the reason being that skin creams works on the epidermis area so uh, that uh, that limit is uh, uh, fine there but when we talk about the oral product like toothpaste it is not acceptable at all now uh, along with every indian standard there comes a list of annexures so let us try to understand the list of annexures and close with this indian standard for the assessment of uh, toothpaste the first annexure a comprises of the list of ingredients which are conventionally used in the manufacture of the toothpaste it comprises of the conventional ingredients being used into different categories like polishing agents surface active agents humectants binding agents and others as for the part of 4707 part 1 i have told earlier this is the product development part for the cosmetics part 1 com uh, comprises of all the dyes and other coloring and pigmenting agent whereas the part 2 of the 4707 basically comprises of all the substances which are not considered to be safe to be used into the cosmetics now annexure b again determines the fineness fineness of the product detailed analytical methodology is like it passes through the ultrasonic treatment and to test for the fineness test annexure c is for the determination of ph and actually d is for determination of heavy metal contamination that is a total heavy metal contamination uh, including the lead test and actually d comprises for the testing of arsenic and actually if comprises of the determination of foaming powders so foaming powder con, uh, capacity has to be determined in case of the toothpaste and actually g comprises of the fluoride activity analysis in case of the fluoridated type 2 toothpaste Annexure H comprises of the uh, very important abrasivity measurement test. This actually identifies the specific procedures for the determination of dentifrice the abrasivity using the laboratory methods. Annexure J comprises of the list of the adjunct Indian standards which are associated with the toothpaste. So, in a nutshell, in a brief, I try to summarize all the test methods which need, which are very important in the case of toothpaste. And that for the detailed analytical method, you can refer the Indian standard guideline. Uh, mentioned on the uh, bureau of indian standard uh, website uh, in a nutshell i have tried to comprise and emphasize on the important test specifically relevant for the toothpaste this is again the, the same table which i have uh, explained you earlier about the requirements of the toothpaste carrying all the number of the characteristic test thank you so much for watching my video i am i am hopeful that i am able to make you clear about the important test and analytical methodology which is desired as per the bureau of indian standards particularly and specifically for the toothpaste please do subscribe for my channel for continuous updates also please like share and also comment in the comment box thank you so much for watching my video